What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Two Car Garage. We're working on our 45 year old dirt bike, our 1974 Yamaha DT250 Enduro right behind me. We're still waiting on some carb parts to come in. Um, it should be in in like a couple days or something. So in the meantime, I have another idea of something I can do just to hold me over and satisfy my thirst to turn a couple wrenches on this thing. And you are not gonna like it. On all of these old two strokes, but especially the DT250, for some reason, it's known for having a lot of carbon junk basically in the exhaust, right? Really dirty exhaust, what you think of as, you know, pluming smoke with a two stroke. But these DT250s, especially, I'm not exactly sure why, but the exhausts are really, really known for getting heavy carbon buildup. So much so, in fact, that it can really hinder the performance of these. I used to have a 1972 or three DT250, I believe, that when it was fully restored and running awesome, it could only go 40 miles an hour, just wide open throttle, 40 miles an hour. And then when I cleaned out the exhaust, it could rip it at 75 or 80 miles an hour. So it is a huge difference. Now, I haven't heard this run yet. I don't know what type of condition the exhaust is in. The odometer was only showing a few thousand miles, but the odometer the, or the speedometer also doesn't work. So who knows how long it's been driven. Uh, with it not counting miles. Believe it or not, the right way to clean these out is to heat them up, but a torch will not do it. You're gonna have to put them in fire, literally. I got this advice on one of the forums years ago. Somebody was like, uh, I mean it, throw it in a campfire. That is the only way to heat these up enough because you need to heat it at this expansion tube here, not just in this little you know muffler diffuser here so the only way to heat it up enough is literally to put it in fire so i'm gonna go out i'm gonna dump a bunch of gasoline on some wood and cardboard get a raging fire and then literally just roast this in it now on really bad ones i've seen this sort of like putrid yellow and white sort of smoke start piping out of the uh, exhaust and that's all that junk in there just burning off. So that's what you wanna see. If I don't see any of that, then that means that it was already pretty clean. All right, looks like we made the right decision because this baby is smoking. Smoking a pancake, bong and blitz. So you see what I do is shift the exhaust around to different spots that way. Each part is over the main area of heat for any given amount of time. That way I'm sure I roast the entire thing all the way through. So, I mean, you can see how it's still smoking because there's a lot of carbon in there, right? And it needs to get really, really hot before it starts burning off. So probably for the first like 10 minutes, nothing was happening till it really, really started to roast and now we're cooking. So I'm just gonna leave this like this for probably another like 20 minutes or so. Um, until the smoke dies down. I make sure I get every part of the main exhaust and the diffuser. All right, it's the next day. We let these things cool down after roasting them in the fire. And you might have had your doubts, right? As far as like, is this gonna damage the exhaust and this, uh, these diffusers and mufflers that you honestly like cannot find on the used market or new for that matter? And check it out, right? I haven't even cleaned it up yet. And you can see that some areas just have some carbon built up from the fire, right? So it just needs wiped down. But overall, you can see how it's pretty much the exact same. Check out the little uh, baffler, diffuser thing, muffler at the end here. You can see it's just a little blackened from soot basically, but that'll just clean right up. Now last night, the last of the carburetor parts that I was waiting for came in. So we are ready to rebuild the carb put it in the bike and see if it starts. So very, very soon, we're gonna see if this bike kicks. 
with pretty much me doing the last thing I could think of. So let's put the exhaust in, then rebuild the carb, and then see if we can get this thing started. Here's our carburetor. Let's see what parts we got to replace. So first we have this tiny little O-ring and this is to replace this O-ring here on the main um, like jet thing. Uh, this is what seals inside the bottom of the float bowl where the main jet is. So if that's not sealed perfectly in there, um, it won't feed fuel correctly. So this O-ring is an integral part of the system. It's intact, but people say even if it's worn um, at all, it can cause problems. So for a dollar or whatever, we just got another one. So the first thing is this O-ring. Second, we have our pilot jet. Remember we had to uh, use a bolt extractor to get our old pilot jet out. It was clean, right? Like the main hole in it was clean. However, you can see it's drilled on the sides. So without pulling it completely, you're not sure how clean these holes are on the sides and just the uh, tube that it rests in as a whole. So we've got that out. We're replacing the pilot jet. The next thing we're replacing, this doesn't keep it from running, but it looked worn, so we're replacing it anyway, is the choke plunger. So here's the choke plunger. You can see that when the choke is off, it plunges down. There's some rubber on the bottom, which seals the passageway. This rubber is pretty worn, however. It was like up on the sides and I had to peel it away. So again, just replacing anything that seems worn, so a new choke plunger. And lastly, the most likely culprit, other than the pilot jet, is the float bowl gasket. Remember our old float bowl gasket here had this tear, uh, which could have been causing our problems, not really sure. So this is everything we're gonna replace. We're gonna rebuild the carb, put it in, see how it goes. Well, short of actually buying a new carburetor, I don't see any way that this could get any more fresh. I mean, it is clean as a whistle. It, the jets are perfect. It's got a new pilot jet, new float bowl gasket, new choke plunger. Uh, it's been in the ultrasonic cleaner now several times. It is very, very fresh. So, Let's prep it a little bit more, see if it starts. I mean, if this bike doesn't start now, I honestly have no idea what it could be then. No idea. All right. Yeah. I pulled the spark plug and it is covered in fuel. So we are getting fuel now from the carb. Grasping at straws here, but maybe the gas is just old, right? I, I probably got it like three months ago, maybe four months ago. So maybe it's just really old gas. Let me go get some fresh gas, mix it up with some oil, try that. All right, I got some fresh gas, mixed it up 30 to one with some Yama Lube. 30 to one is what most people recommend for people who are making these with premix now. Um, it's on the oilier, heavier. It's on the heavier side. 
Um, I could even go a little bit heavier simply because the owner is going to be racing the bike, but it's good for right now. It's measured perfectly. Um, there's no excuse now. Well, I'll tell you what, I am running out of ideas here. I'm, I'm actually starting to get a little worried because this thing just won't stink and start. Um, I've got one more trick up my sleeve and it's honestly like the easiest, um, simplest thing you could imagine. So you'll remember from a video or two videos back, we're getting really, really good spark on our spark plug. However, the way to test it, right, is either with an inline spark tester, which we use, so we can see that we're getting spark before the plug, or we take the plug out, put it, you know, ground it on the cylinder, and we see it. But sometimes spark plugs will make good spark out in the open air, but not under compression. So our spark plug may not be firing, right? Because remember, our spark plug is wet. So with our rebuilt carb, we are getting fuel. We have compression. So spark is the only thing that's left. Like uh, it's gotta be right. So maybe this whole time we just needed a new spark plug. So I pulled our old plug and it looks like it's in good shape. It is the stock NGK plug. Now, of course they literally don't make this NGK plug anymore. Like NGK, does not produce this plug. So the alternative is to either go a little bit hotter or a little bit colder and plug. From what I understand, it's better to always go and air on the side of colder. So instead of a B8 ES plug, we're going for a B9 ES plug. So I have a fresh plug. Let's put it in and see if that now is what's holding our bike back from running something as simple as a plug. So let's make sure that this is gapped correctly and pop it in the bike and see if it starts. Did you hear that? Um, it so sounded like it really wanted to start. Well, against all odds, it actually starts. Um, I had to jack the idle all the way up pretty much and uh, crank the throttle wide open and kick it 85 times for it to finally go, but it went. And it could pretty much sit there and idle for a while too, which is pretty surprising. So this is great news. Um, I will not think that the entire time it was only the spark plug that thought will not enter my mind because I won't be able to sleep at night. Um, remember, we did a lot to it. We rebuilt the carb, we replaced the seals, the pilot jet, cleaned it out really good, did our timing. And then at the very end, when we realized we were getting fuel, then we replaced our spark plug. 
So I think that was the last piece of the puzzle to actually get it started. But here's the real test. Sure, it started after 85 kicks and fiddling around, but will it start again now by kicking it? So let's see, that's the real test. Okay, it ran again, but the fuel hose popped off and we're spewing fuel over it, fuel everywhere. Can't let it get on the baby stroller. Well, I'll tell you what, this sea biscuit is now running. Um, so to take you back through the craziness of trying to get this thing started, we had to replace the coil because we weren't getting spark. We had to set the timing because it was way off. Then we had to rebuild the carburetor and then we had to replace the gasket in the carburetor, extract the pilot jet, and then it was getting fuel, but it still wasn't running. And then we finally replaced the spark plug. I know you're thinking to yourself, why wouldn't you just replace the spark plug originally, right? Well, the spark plug looked fine and we were getting spark with it. However, we were only getting spark with it when it's outside of the bike. Like that's how you test for spark, remember? you have it outside of the bike grounded on the cylinder. I guess it wasn't sparking under compression because after doing all that, we then replaced the spark plug and after a lot of kicks, which isn't too surprising, it's below freezing and it's its first time starting, it finally kicked over. Now it's not running well and it's not running well because we're not really running any sort of air filter. Um, I was either starting it and running it with no air filter or just that uni style foam filter, but it's jetted for stock. So we need a stock restriction for the air. Hence the stock air box, which didn't come with the bike, but I found one on eBay. And as you can see, it is intact, but it is very, very dirty. I haven't actually taken this out of the box until now it's like partly metal partly plastic and behind this cover where there should be three screws but apparently there's only one is the air filter you know i hate working on anything even turning one screw on dirty stuff so let's clean it first and then we'll see what the inside looks like so we're going to clean this up and then check it out <laughs> Now that our intake is clean, our air box, we can see that the one mount is damaged. See how this is sort of bent back. It should be folded over like this and held down. So this is really thin metal. I could weld it, but it'll probably just burn through. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do instead, because it looks like it was just like spot welded three times from the factory. I think what I'm gonna do instead is just JB weld it on. This is just uh, you know supporting this lightweight in one spot. So some JB weld should be fine. Yeah, let's JB weld, or should I weld it? Hmm. Maybe I should just try to weld it, right? I mean, it's thin, but I mean, just a couple of spot welds, why not, you know? A couple of spot welds right on the back there, maybe? But what if I burn through it, then I'm hosed. Now, if I burn through it, I can just JB weld the little hole then. I'm gonna try to spot weld it, because that'll be the best thing, so. Yeah, we'll just try to spot weld it, sold.
here's the finished product. You can see there's just some JB Weld schmoozed on there, but any of the holes that we burned through are filled. And then on the inside, we schmoozed it a little bit too, where it tore. So with those spot welds and then the JB Weld around that seam and the holes, this should be just fine, especially because this is supported in a couple different spots. Let's let that JB Weld dry before we mess around with it anymore. All right, the airbox cleaned up really nice after putting it in the ultrasonic cleaner, cleaning it really, really good on the outside, scrubbing it, blowing out all the debris. And then as you can see, I laid down a few coats of VHT's black epoxy paint and it turned out really good. Um, we're gonna let it dry and we have a few other parts to order for the intake. But other than that, as you can see here, the bike is ready to go now that it runs. Am I surprised that we got it running? I wouldn't say surprised. Um, I mean, eventually you get everything running, right? Eventually you just replace stuff and fix stuff and you just go through one by one and eventually it's done. But I'll tell you what, week after week of replacing, repairing and adjusting stuff and it's still not starting, you start to get kind of demoralized. So I am thrilled that this is finally running. I mean, it just kicks right over and idles even without the stock airbox on. So we got that stock airbox, it's cleaned up, it's painted and drying right now. I ordered the air uh, intake boot for it to attach it to the carburetor on eBay. I have to order the air filter. So once we get that stock airbox set up, we'll be able to really dial in the carb and get it running perfectly. But happily, we don't have to wait for that to come in for next week's video because next week's video, the fun starts. This is where we get to take our clean slate, right? Our bare motorcycle right now, and we get to build it however we want. And as you guys remember, we are building this thing into a vintage motocross racer. So it is gonna be awesome. I am really, really looking forward to this part. Sure, it's nice fixing stuff and getting stuff running, and you feel the joy of, you know, it doesn't start and now it starts. But this is where like the creativity comes in, where you have this picture, this uh, image in your head of what you want it to be, and then you create it. So here we have our blank canvas, right? Forks, a wheel, an engine, and another wheel. Let's build a vintage racer. Thanks for watching, guys, as always. We're over 250 subscribers now. I feel like any day the YouTube algorithm is just gonna dump me on everybody's homepage and everyone will be like, who's this mediocre guy in this mediocre garage working on mediocre mo motorcycles? Subscribe. But until that day comes, uh, thank you for getting in on the ground floor, right? I appreciate every view. I appreciate every comment and every time you hit that like button. So please keep it up. And I can't wait to see you next week. Thanks.